file photo doesn't do her justice. She looks familiar. Reminds me of an actress or someone. Come on, Bo, you know the only movies you watch are porn. <clears throat> oh, yeah, right, with the... Ah, watch out, it's a Terminator! I mean, robot. I swear that thing looks like something out of Terminator. But no worries, it's just an Amato robot. Probably just as bad, but not as bad. You know what, yeah, it's probably just as bad. It's Binary Domain! Binary Domain is a third-person shooter released in 2012 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. The game was developed by Yakuza Team, who if you couldn't guess are the same cats behind the Yakuza franchise, and published by SEGA, and this is the PlayStation 3 version of the game. In Binary Domain, you play as Dan Marshall, the leader of this ragtag group of characters in this game known as a Rust Crew. To sum it up and keep it spoiler-free, you're sent in to stop a company known as Imata from creating robots known as Hollow Children, who look and believe they are human. Why, you son of a bitch! So with the story side things out of the way, it's what do you expect really, another third person duck and cover shooter. But instead of shooting minorities or aliens, you get to shoot things everyone can have fun shooting. Robots! Outside of being able to shoot robots, the game does a few interesting things like voice commands. But sadly, I didn't have a spare microphone to use for this recording to test out this feature. But from what I've heard, it's pretty hit and miss. But you can still issue commands with the controller anyways, making the feature, in my opinion, kind of pointless to begin with. We got some time still. Wanna get a little action in, partner? <laughs> yeah, you're a player. That's my man. Go over and talk to him. I'm counting on you. Time for browsers. Yo, Dan, how'd it go, brother? She game to take us on? Yeah? This is great! I gotta get me some of that. Let me go talk to her now. Hey, baby. Huh? No dice. Customers always right, baby. Shit. Damn, when did hoes get standard? Breaks my freaking heart. Why I always fall for the hard to get one. It breaks my heart to also say the game also features an online multiplayer system. But sadly, as of recording this over two years since the game's release, the multiplayer is all but dead. So I didn't really get any footage to capture of it, sadly. So I'll be focusing this review purely on the single player aspect of the game. So with that being said, let's start things off with the good. <laughs> Kicking things off with the single player in this game is pretty damn solid. I found the story to be entertaining from beginning to end and had a lot of fun playing it. I personally clocked in a good 8 hours or so into this game, which is a decent length for a third person shooter campaign. But what makes the campaign so good is just the presentation of it. The voice acting and dialogue has some very cheesy moments, it's almost B-movie levels at times, which I personally love. Hey Marshall, welcome to Japan, brother. That's my welcome, your ugly ass. <laughs> the story doesn't take itself too serious at times, but when the story does get serious nearing the end of the game, it's pretty decent without giving anything away. If you're a fan of movies like The Terminator and iRobot and enjoy some cheesy dialogue, you'll be in for a good time with Binary Domain. I mentioned earlier you can dish out commands with the microphone, but not only that, you can also make choices throughout the game and build up a trust for each of your squad members. 
The trust system in this game I thought was pretty cool and interesting, and it gets you to interact and learn a bit more about each yeah, of the characters. And once was. again, to keep it spoiler free, if you don't have a high trust with them, things play out differently and they will ignore your orders more often, offering some replayability to the game to see more of the outcomes. And of course, you can also build trust by shooting robots and reviving your teammates. You can also lose trust by accidentally shooting them, although you'll have to do that a lot to get on their bad side, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. The controls are also pretty solid for a third person shooter. You point, you aim, you blow robots heads off, and they go on a murder and spree of their fellow robots. It all works just the way you'd expect it to. The weapons are fun to use and pretty predictable. You've got everything from Dan's assault rifle, which has a secondary attack that fires a shockwave, which can be pretty useful later on. As well as being able to upgrade your rifle at shops throughout the environment. This will pretty much be your main gun throughout the game and is pretty much your most powerful weapon. You can also upgrade your squad members' weapons in the shop, as well as being able to purchase nanomachines to give you and your squad different side effects, like being able to reload faster, or hold more med packs, for example, and things like that. You can also pick up a number of other Just weapons throughout the environments, including SMG, sniper rifle, shotgun, different types of grenades, and RPGs, or you can also just buy them in the shop. But probably my favorite thing about this game is the boss fights. They're extremely over the top and have giant robots of all varieties. Time's roll. And the game has plenty of them as well, a lot of them being giant robots with different attack patterns and giant glowing weak spots. In fact, the bosses in this game remind me of the boss fights from Platinum's Vanquish, and that's never a bad thing. And they're an absolute blast to fight against. What's wrong? I am picking up an unidentified thermal reading from behind our vehicle. It is quite massive. Great. Now what? Oh, no biggie. Just another enemy to take out. Maybe you should have a look before you say that. I should also mention that the soundtrack in this game is also very good. Sega always seems to nail the sounds in their games, and this one is no different. Much better than that last game I reviewed. But not even the best music in the world can drown out. She is much prettier than you, monsieur. The bad. <laughs> oh, real smooth. <laughs> Speaking of sound, as I mentioned earlier, you can use the headset to issue out commands and such to your squad, or you can just use the controller. However, I found myself never using this feature, never giving out commands. Pretty much 95% of the enemies in this game I could pretty much handle on my own, and found myself rarely, if ever, using commands during combat. And as for the characters themselves, they're pretty generic and uninteresting aside from a few. In fact, I can't even remember half their names by the end of the game. But on top of that, I did mention this game has pretty cheesy dialogue and almost a B-movie tier story, which for some may enjoy, but if you want good voice acting, go elsewhere. Externally indistinguishable from humans? When in God's name did robotics get this advanced? The tech to build a robot skinned in a living layer of cells has been around for some time now. It's just been illegal. Your squad's AI at times can also be really helpful and even flying at the enemies. Whereas other times they'll blatantly run in front of you a lot, or just stand around and get shot at at times. So the AI is really hit and miss. Your squad can also get really annoying at times on letting you know where they are. For example, in this boss fight, I had no idea where my squad ran off to, and I was running around for a good few minutes just trying to find them, and all you keep hearing is this. Man, your ass over here. Dad, what are you doing, man? Get your ass over here. Sam, what are you doing? Get over here. Dad, what are you doing, man? Get your ass over here. Dad, what are you doing, man? Get your ass over here. 
I would really prefer if you would be quiet. And on a more minor note, the melee attack in this game is pretty unsatisfying. But what's never minor is... The ugly. Where I discuss graphics. Now, graphically, probably my favorite thing about this game is seeing the robots get torn to pieces from your gunfire. It's very satisfying and almost brutal in a way. And the cutscenes, apart from some terrible dialogue, are all very well done and have some great character models. And if you couldn't already tell, it can be pretty damn amusing at times as well. The settings and environments in this game are also really well done and varied. Everything from the slums of the Tokyo Underground, to the futuristic city above, to the creepy junk piles of Amada. So as you could tell, the game has a number of varied and interesting settings for you to shoot robots through. And overall, graphically it's nothing special, but still pretty decent nonetheless. The PlayStation 3 version of the game ran smoothly as well, with very few hiccups, and was pretty much bug free for me personally, so that's also a plus. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for some fun boss fights, an interesting story, and if you like or dislike robots, check out Binary Domain. I give this game, literally robots in disguise, out of 10. Bloody hell! Don't stop, yo! Keep flooring it! <laughs>